first stage, we will try to understand the logic of the content marketing and delve into potential advantages of it. Soon after, you will learn the brief history of content marketing. I have to say that it is quite interesting because I'm sure at the first glance, most of the people um, think that it is something started with um, digital transformation of marketing. However, that is totally wrong. Um, content marketing has deeper roots than we guessed, actually. And then we will draw a logical framework for content marketing by quoting different definitions proposed by different authors. And when it comes to these definitions, um, I just would like to remind that please try to identify similarities and differences between them because some of them uh, is quite sale oriented while others aim to develop brand recognition by producing and distributing qualified content. On the other hand, some theoretical frameworks such as important components of uh, and benefits of um, this practice are underlined. After creating a theoretical foundation, um, some of the successful case studies about content marketing um, will be reviewed. I'm sure these case studies will help to understand content marketing issue with its details. And the webinar will be finalized with a roadmap on how to write assignments for week three. And probably I will create the similar roadmap for next week's assignment too. Okay, firstly, I would like to talk about digital transformation a bit because it is the core components of everything which I will explain uh, within the context of this webinar. Uh, because all these digital media and digital marketing issues were based on this um, digital transformation issue, actually. As you all know, we live in an electronically integrated era. So every single step of us uh, has a digital uh, mark. Um, it's, it's a mark which is created with the actual data and we track, for example, for instance, we track how many kilometer we rode bicycle uh, with apps. There are smart city systems uh, which allows us to find convenient car slots. Even they designed uh, a kind of smart floor system for homes which uh, recognize your walking pattern and when you stay uh, without moving for a long period of time on the ground, it calls ambulance for you. Uh, this is where digital transformation reached so far. Uh, while all these things are happening, uh, we also witnessed that web is, web is transforming too. So it becomes more participatory uh, since it is established and marketing, understanding of the marketing is changed too. Um, while I was writing uh, my master thesis during an in-depth in interview, I asked a question to a startup owner in Lithuania about transformation of web 1.0 to 2.0 and asked the influence of this process to creating brand awareness uh, she just uh, explained the situation like following and it was really influential actually. Um, she said that I think the transformation was roughly what I see was that before brands were just sending out message and now they are more receiving message and asking more questions and then testing things and perhaps creating a more kinds of content, various content, and then they just more expected to get something back, more feedback about the product and more feedback about what they are talking about in general, just communication. People say that is now two-way communication, but I think uh, this part is quite important actually. I think 
it's even more than that. It is more communication from the customers towards to the brands rather than two-way communication. So, as you all well aware that individuals have been bombarded with messages by different establishments via different channels, it is possible to face with advertisements on social networks, search engines, mobile applications, online newspapers, the blog we like to read, YouTube channel we addicted to watch, and etc. There's quite interesting research, which is realized by Bone and Short in 2012, and it is quite good example in order to visualize the picture of what is the media consumption of modern individual. According to Bone and Short, media consumption of an average person on an average day is calculated as over 100,000 words. This means they consume 34 gigabytes of media in an average day because there are plenty of branded messages. Can you imagine how hard it is to make a buying decision in an atmosphere where conflicting messages fly? Or uh, can you imagine how hard to persuade an individual to buy your product or pay for the service you provided? In addition to that, engagement ratio of the individuals with branded content is quite limited since there are plenty of messages However, um, new technologies present new opportunities for brands to engage with their target audience and potential of these technologies are quite high actually. Content marketing is one of the rising star among the digital marketing communication practice. It is possible to explain content marketing as an integrated and strategic pull strategies to influence consumer behaviors of course, we will provide several definitions in uh, next slides. Um, but we also can think content marketing as a mix of blogging, social media management, search engine optimization, and UX design, actually. Content marketing offers new opportunities for brands and establishments in different scale and kind. Um, it allows brands to make their voice heard, um, let's say, in this advertisement cacophony. So, but of course, there are several other advantages of content marketing. As a result of its consumer-oriented perspective, content marketing allows brands to get better return of investments in branding and communication efforts. For instance, content marketing is one of the most effective tools in order to create brand awareness and loyalty via digital channels because it uh, doesn't have a push strategy but pull strategy to create an influence on consumers. Nature of content marketing is um, overlapping with the nature of digital media, actually. Um, it puts the user first, uh, doesn't push interrupting promotion messages, and doesn't destroy user experience. Instead of the content marketing aims at, in, instead of that, um, content marketing aims to attracting visitor, visitors with uh, highly qualify, qualified, interesting, and satisfying content. Um, it aims to help consumers um, when they needed information, and while consumers are looking for this information desperately on search engines and social networks. Um, I just would like to uh, create an example for that. Um, for instance, you bought a brand new leather jacket from an X brand and imagine that at the very same day it is stained from oil paint. Um, it's quite, quite a bad situation actually. Um, of course, the first thing would be opening the browser of your smartphone and looking for information on the web directly um, with the sentence, 
how to clean stained leather jackets, maybe. And bingo, um, there is a blog post of the brand where you bought your leather jackets on the top of the search engine result page. And it contains useful clues about how you can overcome with this kind of user mistake and uh, how to clean the stain on your leather jackets. Of course, this consumer-centered perspective aids to establish brand equity. On the other hand, it opens the road which goes to loyalty because it helps the con consumer in really different ways in different hard situations. And also it adds value to humanization and transparency process of the brand. Consequently, consumers start to develop a kind of trust towards the brands. Um, this is just one positive result of the content marketing actually. Another important advantage of the content marketing is that um, it is effective strategy uh, in order to educate cons consumers about different products or service related topics actually. As, um, <clears throat> as you can imagine, if you have knowledge on efficient ways to consume a product, satisfaction ratio of this product will increase correlated to knowledge uh, that you have about the product, actually. Um, <clears throat> that is why uh, when you buy a pasta sauce, uh, it comes with uh, different recipes on stickers of the jar of it. Also, uh, Lewis uh, LinkedIn post proves that consumer education is more than important. We can understand that from James Lewis LinkedIn post that consumer education adds value to consumer brand interaction. Um, because both consumers and brands benefit uh, from it. Uh, I would like to quote his text at this stage because he presents us an interesting example from banking sector in South Africa. Um, he writes um, that a particularly important aspect of consumer education in South Africa is financial services, education and general financial advisory. Many South African consumers are unaware of the basic knowledge and skill required to conduct the most basic day-to-day -day financial transactions such as open a bank account, draw money, etc. This problem is a national one, but the rural communities generally are the most disadvantaged. Only in the past five to ten years has the focus of consumer education begun to become a conscious strategy and one that can benefit both consumer and brand in many ways like innovation, customer service, referrals, self service, etc. And content marketing with its unique point of view is quite functional to educate consumers. It is possible to publish ebooks, white papers or publish blogs. In addition to that, it is possible to circulate all kinds of formats on different unique social networks. Even it is possible to allow individuals in target audience to download these electronic materials in return of their email list subscriptions. And this gives brands a chance to keep their relation consistent with target audience as long as they use right strategy and do not spam to their emails. <clears throat> One of the um, most significant contribution of content marketing to brand is brands to achieve better ranks on search engine result pages. 
Of course, there are several factors to achieve uh, good results in uh, search engines, uh, such as website design, good linking strategy, good keyword uh, choosing, etc. Uh, but I can say that content marketing still contributes uh, to this process. As you can guess, search engines are one of the first uh, source of information when it comes to make a buying decision. And according to a report which is published uh, on search engine land, uh, four out of five mobile searches eventually lead to purchase and local searches are more than twice as likely to lead to a purchase. Um, this means that uh, you have to create high quality and unique content uh, to find a place uh, in search engine result pages and content marketing also is good uh, tool to localize your uh, your your uh, marketing strategy and this gives you a chance uh, to get some uh, how it calls uh, some uh, feedback return from the local searches um, however search engines are quite inclined to place um, this kind of unique content on top positions and content marketing has an understanding that necessities constant publication of highly qualified unique contents. Uh, consequently, this helps brands to achieve better ranks. Um, as I told, of course, there are several other factors when it comes to success desired rankings on search engines. However, content marketing still helps to success this. According to Kissmetrics blog, uh, the Kissmetric is a tool for tracking, analyzing, and optimizing uh, your growth cycle, your website's growth cycle. Um, according to Kissmetrics, uh, search engine optimization is all about content marketing. Based on the blog post, we can state that uh, search engine optimization and content marketing is somehow intersecting activities. Um, they just proposed some logic statements in blog posts as following. Um, search engine optimization states the requirements. Uh, content marketing fulfills them. Search engine optimization demands content. Content marketing is content. Search engine optimization demands link back. Content marketing introduces link backs. This means that when you create unique content, people tend to share it on social networks and quote you on their blogs. And this creates link back for your content. Search engine optimization demands on-site technical optimization. Content marketing needs great UX. Search engine optimization demands consistent output. Content marketing requires consistency. One of the most important value created by content marketing is that it allows brands and establishments to drive traffic for their web pages. Um, but how can it be realized? Blog is a vital tool in order to increase the visitor count of a brand. Just hold a minute. Okay. Um, what did I say? Um, blog is a vital tool um, in order to increase uh, the visitor count of a brand's web page with content marketing. Establishing a blog has been composing the spine of content marketing actions since um, the, this discipline started to be conducted on web platforms, actually. Um, blogs have been providing the infrastructure that allows organizations to create and deliver valuable and relevant content to individuals in target audience. 
and blogs have become the major actor uh, in content marketing process since social networks have been setting several strict rules uh, in message sharing process such as um, character count limits etc. Thus, branded blogs are vital uh, in order to create and distribute relevant and valuable content. There are several advantages of um, having a blog for brands. However, it is possible to state that the most desired one is increasing the ranking place in search engine result pages in a related search term and reaching more visitors. And a strategically well-designed blog might help to success that. In addition to that, content marketing is a practice uh, leaning on circulating and distributing the content on right places. At this point, social networks have been providing adequate visibility for branded content and increasing uh, virality of a content because many social networks have functions such as sharing, retweeting, reblogging and likes. Thus, well-written contents have potential to create word of mouth and pull visitors to brand's web page. And of course, more visitors increases the chance of uh, sale or brand awareness or return of investments. Um, maybe we should underline one last simple thing about content marketing. Um, content marketing aims to create own media of brand or company. Um, this purpose of content marketing is, uh, I think, enormously important uh, in context of the digital marketing communication. Um, marketers are renting place from the various mediums such as search engines, social networks, applications, websites, blogs, and etc. However, it is clearly possible to indicate that buying an advertising place on digital medium increases the dependency to these channels. Um, search engine advertising is openly exemplified this dependency actually. Um, for instance, in case of a specific keyword being chosen for advertising on a search engine advertising platform, uh, price of the clicks for this specific keyword might increase and it might influence all over process, overall process. Uh, based on this point, in a long-term establishment who uses this kind of advertising might get at the race of search engine advertising as a result of uh, skyrocketed prices. On the other hand, content marketing might provide a solution for these kind of problems by establishing a media for brands um, with its long-term oriented and strategic approach. On the other hand, uh, content marketing contributes to storytelling process, of course, because content marketing is the main sort of strategy to differentiate the product or the service from the competitors, because it opens a channel for direct, direct conversation between consumers and brands. So creating content is the service uh, for the customer and it's the way brands sort of create image uh, for itself and who what it is doing. So I can say that it contributes a lot to the uh, brand story and uh, it contributes a lot to image and brand value. So before passing the next slide, I just would like to spell order. So you see a graphic on the slides. So it is possible to state that um, based on this graph actually, content marketing has been gradually gaining popularity. 
I would like to show you, uh, I wanted to show you this graph. Uh, I just fetched it from Google Trends, actually. I just searched the term content marketing, and this is the graph uh, uh, which is showing how uh, the how this keyword uh, gained pop popularity, actually. Um, as you can see, since uh, 2011, um, its search count skyrocketed. Uh, this means that more people have been paying attention to content marketing practice every passing day. So, um, after mentioning about benefits of content marketing, we can take a look to historical backgrounds of this practice. We can say that content marketing has deep roots in history. Um, it is surprising, but first content marketing implication was realized in late 19th century. This is really long time ago, and when I checked these implications, their understanding of content marketing is similar to today's content marketing approach. However, there were several different names for this practice um, such as brand journalism, corporate publication, or consumer publication. So you can just find more of them in the book of the Joe Pluzzi. So, um, but you know, when we return the topic, um, after digital developments, uh, practice uh, has come into prominence and methods of distributing content changed. As you can guess, uh, people do not have to print and uh, think about logistic of all these printed materials nowadays, because um, we have ebooks, blogs, and social networks. So I would like to take a look to. Um, examples of content marketing in the history. I just thought that uh, it would be a bit interesting to see some uh, historical material uh, about this practice. Um, I can tell you that the Thoreau magazine is one of the best known case uh, for it in history. Um, it is uh, providing useful information about agriculture uh, and it's first published in 1895. Um, during that time, it reached really big success. And after 17 years, it reached to 4 millions of readers. Remember, key of success in content marketing efforts is being consistent. And I can say that Forum Magazine is achieving this. And even today, um, it reaches to 2 million readers globally. Another example for early content marketing practices is um, realized by Michelin. Um, the tire brand published 35,000 copies of guides on car maintenance. It provided useful information about car maintenance and car-related topics. So, there is another example. And Jello um, is our last example uh, for content marketing in history. Uh, Jello is an instant gel dessert brand. Actually, uh, it is one of the starters of a technique which is still in use nowadays. Um, Jello this distributed uh, free copies um, of its own cookbook and it is claimed that they raised the sales um, over one billion dollars. So, after these examples, I would like to convey different definitions of content marketing. At this point, the sentence, which is uh, written by uh, Liz Yeomans and Ralph Tench for public relations, uh, must be remembered. Um, they say that definitions shape people's expectations of what PR 
could or should be about. The same reason explains why content marketing needs a definition within the context of this webinar. Of course, there are um, several definitions of content marketing, but before delve into the definitions of content marketing, it is important to explain digital marketing communications because content marketing is partially elements of digital marketing communication practice. And I just would like to quote uh, Merasivo's uh, definition uh, when it comes to define uh, digital marketing communications, actually, um, because Merasivo uh, has proposed a clear definition of digital marketing communications. Um, according to Merasivo, digital marketing communication <coughs> as a communication and interaction between a company or brand and its customers uh, using dig dig digital channels, um, for example, the internet, email, mobile phones, and digital TV, and information technology. This definition appreciates that communication can be two-way, initiated by either the marketer or customer, Communication can be general messages to a larger audience or personalized messages. A customer relationship aspect acknowledges that communication can also include a relational and service elements. For example, news reminders, tips, uh, not just advertising and offers aiming uh, for immediate, immediate uh, purchasing uh, transactions and behaviors. Based on this proposition, um, content marketing either have common and distinctive points with digital marketing communication, philosophy of dialogue, channels and informing consumers are common points of content marketing and digital marketing communication. On the other hand, aim of the digital marketing communication does not include owning the media. Another distinctive point is that content is placed in the core of the content marketing and any strategy starts from the content creation. In frame of the digital marketing communication, social media apps Search engine advertising, mobile apps uh, can be used intensively um, with hard sell uh, language, actually. Um, however, these channels only can be used as content distribution channels uh, within the framework of the content marketing practice. And hard sell language is uh, not something desired. I mean, it is totally not something desired. <clears throat> After developing an understanding on uh, the place of content marketing in digital marketing communications, um, we can look at possible definitions of content marketing. Um, firstly, I would like to convey the definition from a source, Everyone Benefits in Daily Life, Oxford Dictionary. According to Oxford Dictionary, content marketing is a type of marketing that involves uh, the creation and sharing of online material, such as videos, blogs, and social media posts that does not explicitly promote a brand, but is intended to stimulate interest in its products or services. Actually, I attach special attention to uh, does not explicitly promote a brand but is intended to stimulate interest in its products or services part of this definition because it reveals a um, consumer-friendly side of the content marketing. Based on this definition, we can indicate that main purpose of content marketing is not sale, but it is providing satisfying information and create an image for brands.
say. Um, within the framework um, of this webinar, I would like to convey uh, one definition from Content Marketing Institute, because um, Content Marketing Institute is one of the well-known uh, publisher about content marketing issues, and they organize several conferences on these them, and they really specialized on uh, content marketing issues, actually. And I should say that articles and reports of Content Marketing Institute are one of the most quoted source in every content marketing article. According to Content Marketing Institute, content marketing is a strategic marketing approach focused on creating and distributing um, valuable, relevant, and uh, constant content to attract and retain a clearly defined audience uh, and ultimately to drive profitable customer action. Um, as you can understand, um, Content Marketing Institute's approach um, includes some profitable purposes. Um, we can interpret this um, as sale, uh, brand awareness, word of mouth, or increase, increasing r reputation. Um, in the meantime, they attach special importance to define audience uh, because uh, defining audience uh, guides overall strategy creation process uh, within the context of content marketing. <clears throat> and uh, last content marketing definition is proposed by Rebecca Leap. Um, according to her, uh, content marketing is uh, being there when consumers need you and seek you out with relevant, educational, helpful, compelling, engaging, and sometimes entertaining information. Content marketing aids in uh, brand recognition, trust, authority, credibility, loyalty, and authenticity. In addition, it helps to make um, customers more educated and informed. Leap positions content marketing as a strategy which uh, increases brand individual engagement, actually. So, uh, for more information, you also can check her book, actually, which is a really good book about uh, content marketing issues, if you're interested in that. In the process of content marketing, um, I identify three important parameters. Um, these three key parameters have vital role for attaining desired outcomes in end of the process of content marketing. These are identifying the target audience, qualification uh, of the content, and distribution channels of the content. Actually, um, I can say that channels have distinguishing role uh, because um, different channels allow to reach different target audiences and it impacts the success ratio of uh, content marketing process. In the process of content marketing, channels where content is delivered are tremendously important. And creating effective content in accordance with features of these channels is key component of the efforts uh, in order to reach consumers who have different backgrounds and profiles. Different channels allow to reach different target audiences um, according to Duggan and his friends on social media, major age group among online adults who use LinkedIn is 30 to 49, while it is 18 to 29 on Facebook. Another data indicates that more black users exist on Instagram than Pinterest. On the other hand, there are more women on Pinterest than Instagram. Um, for instance, from the perspective of given data, it is possible to suggest that 
um, the content of a brand which sells cosmetics made for black people have better chance to be reached by its target audience on Instagram. This proves that uh, channels of information flow and consumption are vital for content marketing. Owner of a digital startup which specialized on beauty products um, indicated that they reach to different consumer profiles via different uh, social networks. She stated that, um, I can say on the behalf of our startup, how we use social networks, we use Facebook to reach our general target audience. That's the girls for 15 to 25 who would like to find beauty ideas and share uh, pictures, videos, uh, you know, tutorials, how to do the makeup. And then, uh, for example, on Google+, Plus, we tend to communicate with uh, a lot older audience uh, that is females from 30 to 55. As you can see, uh, target audience um, is changing uh, depending on the channel which you communicate. <clears throat> Besides the four mentioned process of content marketing, I would like to share a uh, perspective of uh, Pulutzi and Babbitt. Um, they reveal the paradigms of content marketing with their own unique formula. And I can say that this is one of the uh, important formulas uh, in content marketing issues. Um, Plutzi and Barrett have developed a structural approach for uh, content marketing, uh, which is named as uh, BEST. Uh, elements of forementioned formula especially underlines the importance of relatedness of content to target audience because as you can guess if you distribute full of unrelated content to your target audience um, success rate will decrease dramatically um, according to Plutzi and Barrett everything that you communicate with your customers um, has to have a purpose uh, this is behavioral side uh, when it comes to essential uh, they say deliver information that your best prospects uh, really needs if they are to succeed at work or in life and your content must be strategic uh, they say your content marketing efforts must be an integral part of your overall business strategy and you can see the integrity of all content mar marketing practices uh, to overall business uh, issues actually here. And it must be targeted. You must target your content precisely uh, so that it is truly relevant to your buyers. Also, there is another approach towards the components of content marketing. Um, this approach is proposed by Bar Joseph. According to Bar Joseph, content marketing consists of four interconnected components, which are message, format, distribution, and promotion channel. It is possible to say that first two of the four elements are about content and following two are related to marketing of the content. According to Bar Joseph, content consists of message and <coughs> format. Format determines the channel where content will be distributed. And Bar Joseph's formulation can be explained as, as following. following. Uh, first, uh, message. Uh, this parameter is clearly the most important component of the content marketing. Uh, message is what brand would like to convey to target audience and has a direct effect on the result of the process. Second, format. Format of the content might be sound, text or visuals. Accordingly, this parameter is important for determining the distribution channel and promotion. Third, distribution channel. 
based on the futures uh, of the target audience, distribution channels might vary from uh, search engines to social networks. Fourth, promotion. Promotion is the overall campaign, which is conducted in order to distribute uh, the content effectively. <clears throat> I also would like to focus on the message of uh, content, and I divided the type of message into two, uh, which are rational-oriented message and emotional-oriented message. Rational-oriented uh, message aims to provide useful information, and message component of the content is tailored in order to respond to information need of the individuals in target audience. I can say that it is clearly more formal and uh, purpose-oriented. Uh, it has educating features also. However, emotional-oriented content aims to trigger emotions of target audience and attempts to surprise or entertain target audience. Um, this kind of content is especially useful when it comes to creating word of mouth because individuals uh, are more inclined to share surprising or entertaining content. So, now um, I would like to present two case studies to you uh, about content marketing. Uh, one of them shows that how can a digital company benefit from uh, content marketing practice. And the second example is illustrates um, how can traditional uh, small, medium-sized companies uh, use content marketing. So the first example is MailChimp. Yeah, the first example is uh, MailChimp, which is well-known tool in marketing and blogging ecosystem, actually. Um, MailChimp is a web service that allows persons and brands to create um, and segment their email list and realize effective mailing campaigns. Um, another successful feature of the MailChimp is that um, it allows users uh, to measure effectiveness of this mailing process. And users are able to measure effectiveness of their email and campaign in uh, different categories. Uh, they can check, uh, did a user open the mail or clicked somewhere? Or uh, you can check which kind of uh, links receive uh, more lead, uh, I mean, more clicks, or so on. So, I can say that MailChimp is a great tool in order to realize successful content marketing campaigns. Um, in addition to all these features and contribution to content marketing process, um, it is a successful case for content marketing itself. For instance, uh, there's a project called Email Genome Project, which is realized by MailChimp. The Email Genome Project is a uh, MailChimp service that uses software to constantly... Uh, by the way, this explanation uh, is done by MailChimp uh, on the website of the, the Email Genome Project. Uh, the Email Genome Project is a MailChimp service that uses software to constantly analyze millions of email lists and billions of email addresses and uncover stories and trends that are hidden in the data. So you don't need uh, any fancy analytical skills to take advantage of EGP and learn more about your readers. We run the software from our servers and all of the analysis here at MailChimp. EGP is a full service tool that allows you to focus on using MailChimp to send email campaigns while we create better experiences for you and your su subscribers. Just log in to see the results, they say. Of course, this kind of research projects and this kind of tools uh, contributes great uh, value to company it increases the trust of prospect users and current users also. 
it doesn't contain hard sell language, but it is an attempt to inform customers with high quality information and um, tools uh, about email marketing. Um, on the other hand, MailChimp publishes really effective white papers. Um, these white papers explain how email marketing can be used in different segments. You can see the white paper, which is designed by MailChimp for bloggers on the presentation slide. Um, it gives information on how to use MailChimp effectively in blogging process. They mainly convey information on how can you grow your audience, etc. And it is possible to find different MailChimp white papers for different uh, purposes. And I can say that MailChimp also has really uh, effective and interesting blog uh, where you can um, get information about uh, emailing and email campaigns and effective ways and so on. So, but MailChimp also uses social networks to circulate and distribute its content. First, uh, they write blog posts in several email related topics. Then they distribute these content on social networks. As you can see, they use quite interesting captions to attract visitors. On the other hand, some photos from the MailChimp office are circulating on the Facebook page of the MailChimp. So on the slide, you can see a photo from the birthday party, I think. And they just, shows, uh, they just show the backstage of the company. These kind of content are quite important, actually. Uh, because they contribute to the humanization process of the brand and create better engagement um, with the target audience. So another case study for content marketing um, is a traditional small medium sized company uh, which is called as Intelligentsia. Intelligentsia is, a, is, is one of the well-known single origin coffee roaster and seller. Uh, and as you know, uh, third wave coffee shops are quite famous these days and coffee brewing methods of uh, them are quite um, unorthodox. So um, some of the coffee consumers um, would like to brew this kind of coffee at home with high quality single origin beans actually, um, including me, and uh, Intelligentsia prepared well-designed wide um, for new methods of coffee brewing. As you can see uh, on the slide, there is information on different brewing techniques such as uh, V60 or Chemex. So we can say that this is digital form of uh, what Jello did. Uh, in the history, um, but this is just in digital formats, and it increases the chance of uh, search engine visibility, uh, I think.